Hey there, designers. All right, so we just looked at how some SOPs work a little bit. That's fun and exciting. But making the geometry is only half the battle. The next thing we've got to think about is, well, how do we render that stuff, right? How do we turn that into something that's actually going to be interesting and fun to look at, experiment with, and kind of explore in some other way? As it turns out, that's not too difficult for us to kind of start to dig into. And so what we're going to do, right, I'm still here in the same project file. Let's go ahead and dive into our base real-time rendering. Now, I went ahead and added a bunch of kind of empty things in here for us, which is great. These are just kind of placeholders. And what we're going to start is in essential ingredients. And we're going to start here because this is uh, how we start to think about the essential pieces that we need whenever we're going to set up a rendering network. Now, not all of these hold all of the time. There are some exceptions that we can make kind of across the board, and that's all right. But we're going to start with the preliminary primary ingredients that we need, so we have those as a kind of uh, starting point as we're going to be working. All right. So what do we need in order to do some real-time rendering? Well. To get started, we're going to use, we're going to focus on components over here. We need a geometry. We need something that we're going to render, right? We need some object. We need a camera. We need something that, you know, a perspective that we're viewing that thing from. And then we need a light. We need some way of illuminating the scene. And then finally, we need to take this thing that is kind of lives in 3D space, kind of this like abstract 3D space, and then we need to render it. We need to turn it into something that we're actually going to be able to see, right? We've got to flatten that out. We've got to turn it into a texture. We have to turn it into something that we can shoot out of a projector or shoot out of, you know, shoot to a screen or put an, in an Oculus or you name it. We've got to convert it from this abstract space into a meaningful space. So that's, you know, that's all well and good, but Let's split our view here. Let's open our geometry viewer back up. And this is going to kind of help us understand the positioning of these various elements. So here we can see we've got a couple things in our, our scene here. What's going on? So if we actually click on these, we'll see they're going to turn green. That happens to correspond look at that, to our little green highlight that shows up around our object, which is awfully slick and great. Now, one of the things to know about how touch works is that operations that happen here at the component level, right? So when we're moving this thing kind of left and right here, that operation happens on the GPU. This happens in the kind of fast space when it comes to our computation on our machine. And I'm going to kind of spare you some of the technical uh, intricacies of some of this because we're really kind of approaching this from a, uh, a more distant uh, kind of beginner's perspective. The more we dig into this, the more kind of other pieces we have to start to think about and the more complex the language and the concept. But for right now, as, this, as we're kind of experiencing this for the very first time, what we can think of is we can uh, kind of in our minds, we can think about the fact that what we do on these components, right, these operations are going to be very fast. If we were instead, right, to head inside of our component, remember we learned yesterday that components can hold other networks, right? That's where our container lived, our button lived, our slider lived, that's where our base lives. Um, these components hold other networks inside of them. So if we were to instead do a transformation in our torus here inside, right at the SOP level, this operation actually happens on the CPU. So changing, doing the animation uh, here in SOP land is actually going to be far less efficient uh, and is more likely to create problems for us in the long run than if we think about computations that we're going to do here on our component, on our geometry. And in fact, we might even see some of that in action. This isn't necessarily a great representation uh, of this, 
because there are lots of other kind of elements at play, right? All these viewports make a difference. But if we were to middle mouse click on this, right? Actually, let's go ahead and I'm going to add a constant and a trail just so we can see the cost over time. And I'm going to write a real fast little expression. I want the operator called uh, Taurus 1, and I want its cook time. Right? Okay, well, let's, you know, that's where it is right now. So let's go ahead and move this thing around a little bit in X. So we can see that translation, right, that's, you know, costing us 12 ish milliseconds. You know, and again, that's eh, totally right because there's a bunch of other pieces that go along with that. Maybe we were to turn off our viewer here um, and manipulate that. And we're still seeing pretty good cook times here for that object, right? 14 milliseconds is nothing to sneeze at. That's, uh, that is a healthy amount of time on our, our CPU. Um, and if we were to come up here, let's I just did a little copy paste, or excuse me, cut paste, geo one. And let's take a look at the translation here. Okay, well, you know, that 0 0.01 milliseconds is orders of magnitude smaller, in this case, 0 .0, 0 0.005 milliseconds, right? That's a tremendously smaller amount of computation time than 14 milliseconds, right? So that's, you know, part of my, my point here is to just illustrate the importance of where we're doing transformations and how we're thinking about animation. As we start to work with SOPs, right, just like we, we just were, it becomes really tempting to do all of our work in SOPs and move them and animate them and do all sorts of exciting, tremendous, powerful things with them. Uh, and that temptation, right, that trap that's easy to fall into, often makes it appear as though um, we're suffering some really poor performance. And it's easy to kind of point fingers and say, oh, well, you know, I don't even know why I would use this environment if it's going to perform so poorly. Well, you know, we have to kind of understand that the nature of what we're seeing there is related to the fact that we're doing that computation on the CPU as opposed to the best way to do it, which would be on our GPU. So that's, you know, the reason I bring it up is so that we can uh, take the time to understand some kind of best practices. That's a part of learning, uh, especially learning a new environment, is trying to think about, well, I'm not only interested in learning how to do something, but if we can learn a, an efficient way or a clever way to do this from the get-go, that's going to save us a bunch of headache down the line where all of a sudden we're going to have to kind of reinvent the way that we think about working in a particular environment. Okay, yeah, 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 blah, 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 Matt, that's all great. Let's go ahead and turn on our display flag here, right? That's going to let us see kind of in the background a little bit. Uh, and what I want to do for just one second, I'm going to bring up my parameter window here again, is I want us to play with the fact that we can actually, right, like if we move our camera, we can kind of translate our camera up and down. Uh, we can rotate our camera a little bit, right? We've got lots of fun things that we can do to kind of manipulate this particular thing. This is really great. So we can change our, our perspective here. One of the things that we did in class, right, is we uh, kind of recognize the difference between our viewport over here on the right, which lets us have a, another perspective on what's happening in our scene. Uh, kind of, we can see our camera, we can see our light, we can see our geometry. But we realized that if we found some angle that, boy, gosh, you know, I just really love this particular viewing, this, you know, this position looking at this Taurus. Well, I can actually use this drop down menu and I can save it to my camera, right? So I can actually just apply that transformation matrix right over here to my camera. We can see all that stuff shows up. Now that can get you into trouble in, in some circumstances, um, but that is a, you know, if you're just looking at kind of shot setup uh, and you get real comfortable with navigating here inside of uh, our geometry viewer, that's a slick way to be able to transform lights, to be able to transform cameras, geometries, you name it. That's a really great way to kind of be able to do some of that stuff.
Okay, so these are the essential ingredients I've got to think about in terms of how we set up a scene. And it's, you know, I can't belabor that point enough. It's really important to practice that for this process. Set up your scene uh, a bunch, you know, practice, practice, practice. The more comfortable you get with doing all of those kind of setup pieces, the happier you're going to be in the long run when it really comes down to it. I'm going to reset all my parameters here. I'm going to back my camera out just back to five. There we go. And this is set us up right back to our starting position.